introducing myself. My name is Linda Buckley, and I'm really, really pleased to be here to talk with you about mindfulness, eating, and moving. My favorite topics. I'll tell you why I'm doing this. I'm retired from my work as a dietitian. I worked for many years as a registered dietitian in hospitals. I've got a master's degree in clinical nutrition and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. And on top of that, I had the opportunity to study mindfulness-based stress reduction, which is wonderful. And I'll tell you about that in a couple of minutes. And I also am certified to teach that and to teach mindful eating. So they all go together. And I love doing this because in my work as a dietitian, it became really clear to me that it wasn't for lack of information that people didn't do well with their, reaching their weight goals. There was something else going on. Everybody knows what they should eat. But the question is, why do they not do that? And so I'm not gonna try to get inside of your heads, but I'm gonna teach you what I've learned because I've done yoga for many years. And as part of my yoga practice, I've always meditated. And to, to be able to learn how to merge that with my nutrition practice has been a real blessing because I've been able to help people in ways that I never expected I'd be able to do before. So. Mindfulness, eating, and moving. I can't see your faces. I'm kind of scrolling back and forth to see if I can see people's faces, but I don't. I, I can't. I haven't been able to figure how to, how to do that. But what I, I'm just going to talk, and we'll have opportunities for you to share at at other points in in my presentation. So, anyway, mindfulness. I wish I could see a show of hands, but what I'd like to know is. If any of you have had any experiences with mindfulness, what is, do you know what mindfulness is and why it matters? In my training, we were taught that the definition for mindfulness is paying attention on purpose in a particular way to what's going on inside of ourselves, and what's going on inside of our, out around us, in other people, and in the um, and in the world around us, paying attention on purpose, without judgment or criticism of ourselves or of other people. Now, it's a simple definition, but not always easy to apply. So, mindfulness practice is very much in the news these days. You may have seen or heard. In, in the news, in magazines, and all kinds of media, that mindfulness is good for you. But what does it do? What it does is it changes the way we think. It can be wonderfully helpful in managing people's stress levels. If you pay attention to how you're thinking and you pay attention to what you're doing and you're staying in the present moment, it can, be, it can be tremendously useful in not only managing our stress levels, but managing our health. If you have any kind of chronic conditions, cardiac disease, I worked as, in the cardiac rehab for a long time, uh, diabetes, I worked as a diabetes educator for a long time, um, cancer, um, the, and that's just the beginning of a very long list uh, that can be helped by mindfulness practice. If you, can, if you can understand what's going on in your and understand what's within your control and what is not, that will take you a long way towards feeling better and being healthier. So that's the definition for mindfulness. So let me just move on here. I have another slide here. Why mindfulness? And as I said just a few minutes ago, Mindful meditation can help to manage stress and prevent and manage chronic disease of all kinds. And I start with talking about med meditation because that's the foundation of mindfulness practice. And I'll 
tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Mindful eating. Have any, I don't know if any of you have heard of mindful eating before. I wish I could see your faces, but oh well, that it is what it is. Um, uh, mindful eating helps us to develop a relaxed relationship with food. This is not about dieting at all. And, I, and I, that's one of the things that I think is most valuable about mindful eating and mindfulness. And that is that when we are mindful, we're conscious of what's happening inside of our body. Part of mindful eating is developing an awareness, a really deep awareness of what hunger is, learning what it really is and to recognize when we're really hungry and recognize whether the urge, if the urge to eat comes from something other than true physical hunger. So, so recognizing um, when we really need to eat and also when we're in the process of eating to notice how we're feeling as we're eating. So you may start out being very hungry, but then after a few mouths full or a few minutes eating, that may change. And if you are mindful, and if you're not, you notice that as time goes on, you become less hungry. And, be, and being tuned into that can help to prevent overeating. And that I will tell you is one of the most useful tools if weight management is an issue for you, is to be able to recognize when you're becoming satisfied and slow down enough to not overeat. It's huge. So, and the other benefit to it is that you, um, is, you develop a, real, a more relaxed relationship with food and your digestion improves. How many people have I talked to over the years in my work in dietetics who have reflux or GERD? And I always ask, how fast do you eat? And people so often say, very shamefacedly, that they know that they eat fast. And maybe you're one of those, knowing that you, um, knowing that you're eating too fast and knowing that slowing down will help with reflux and GERD can make you feel a lot more comfortable in general. And then lastly, on this slide, we're talking about mindful movement. Now, I, I I'm, think I'm pretty safe in assuming that you know the, uh, uh, that exercise is important. Well, mindful movement is what yoga is. Um, and I don't know if any of you have ever done yoga before, but it's, it's my favorite form of exercise. And one of the things I like about it is it helps me to relieve stress, but it also can be very, you know, it can be very, uh, a very good exercise for toning um, your body. And yoga was developed many centuries ago. Um, so the story goes, it was developed for people who sat in meditation for very long periods of time and who noticed that they were becoming stiff and not able to move very well. And so yoga is intended to keep bodies healthy that are um, sitting in meditation for long periods of time. It is the linking of the body and the mind and being conscious of how you're feeling when you're exercising and also remembering when you're exercising which positions, lengths of time in particular position, um, how you felt afterwards, being mindful of that um, helps you to develop the, the most effective and um, useful exercise programs for yourself. Okay, so oh, let me see. Help, Louisa. 
My What's happening? My presentation is not moving. It will. It just takes a second. Oh, okay. I've noticed other presenters having the same problem. Okay. So, oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <You're> set. <laughs> Thank you for reassuring me. Okay, yeah. so I will just take a deep breath. <laughs> this is where I have to practice what I'm preaching. Um, I am mindful that in, for, a, for a few seconds there, I was starting to get tensed up because I was, I thought something was going wrong. And then uh, Lisa told me that this happens and here we go. I'm okay now. So what, uh, <laughs> what I want to say to you is that mindful meditation is the foundation of what we're going to be talking about today. And mindful meditation is, is what I'm going to tell you about. And we'll do a little uh, mindful meditation uh, uh, exercise during our time together today. Um, and there are many different types of meditation. Mindful meditation was, is what I know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they're all valuable, but this is what I know. And I just wanna tell you that the kind of meditation that we'll be doing together here is, is really just sitting, observing what's going on inside of ourselves and observing our breath. That's all there is to it. There's no chanting, there's no knowing particular words or anything. It's just, it's just basic awareness of ourselves and, and uh, using the breath as a focus of our attention. And that's the, it's the foundation. It's simple, but it's not always easy to do. And I also wanna say that in order to be an effective meditator, you don't have to spend a tremendous amount of time doing it. Um, if you only do two or three minutes per day, it still is very, very beneficial. And, um, and it's actually better to do two or three minutes every day than to go for long periods of time without doing any meditation and then, um, and then try to sit for an hour. That's, uh, that's kind of, uh, I mean, not that it's a bad thing to do, but it's hard, it's hard to do. It's, it's much easier to just take a small amount of time each day um, to do some meditation. Um, and so the next step is the eating mindfully. It's simple to do. It works better than dieting. Believe it or not, I mean, I know that there are many, many diets out there. And I'm sure that many of you, as I have been, have been on many diets and looked at them and tried them and felt really a excited one you start something new and then for some reason or another you know you go to a party you go on vacation or you feel stressed out you go off the diet and then you feel terrible and then you know uh, everything falls apart eating mindfully is not going to tell you what foods to eat it's going to tell you how to eat what is your relationship with food you feel guilty about something to do with food or with your size or with how you look. Eating mindfully is paying attention to how you feel about eating. Not every day are you going to feel like eating the same foods. Yes, of course, I'm going to tell you that vegetables are good for you. Fruits are good for you. Water is the best drink there is. But how often are you going to eat? Everybody's different. Okay, what do we got? Want to go for too long without eating because then of course you're going to be ravenous and you're going to be more likely to eat too fast and to fill up and overdo it. But paying attention to when you're really hungry and when satiety starts kick, kicking in, when you have had enough. So um, that's really what, um, what eating mindfully is all about. That's all it is. There are all that, all there is to it. And let me just tell you that I like to eat. I like to cook. I enjoy interesting foods. And I definitely am not a purist when it comes to the things that I eat, but I do eat healthfully and I am a healthy person. And um, I've been able to maintain my weight for a long time um, by doing just this. So I'll, so I'll just tell you that, um, 
that I'm not going to talk about weight goals or anything like that. I'm just going to talk about how we eat. That's all. And mindful movement is the last piece of this picture. And it be can become a way of life. When you become conscious, when you become in the moment with everything you do, then how you move can be your exercise. And it can also help to prevent you from injuring yourself. So, whoops, what happened there? There we go. Okay, so mindful meditation. I will tell you, and I know some people have, uh, have cautioned me about this. Some people think that this has to do with a particular religion. It doesn't. When you really look at what people do in various religions, you'll learn that meditation, even though it may not be called meditation, meditation is part of, uh, of all religious practices. It's acceptable and foundational to all religious and cultural practices. They may not do it exactly the same way I'm going to tell you how to do it, but, um, but it's there and it, and it doesn't go against any religious uh, beliefs. No equipment is required. Although this young woman looks like she's very comfortable sitting cross-legged on, on a mat, you don't have to sit in any particular position. And you can do it anytime and you can do it anywhere. And so with your permission, I would like to introduce you to a brief mindful meditation for transition and for self-acceptance. So this is probably going to take no more than three minutes. So you'll get a taste of what it's like to have a very brief but very effective meditation. So get yourselves into a comfortable position, seated, or if you would prefer to lay down, some people would like to do that and that's fine. Um, with your back straight, your hands resting comfortably in whatever position feels right to you. Some people like to hold their thumb with their with their two uh, with two of their fingers, but you don't have to do that. You can have your hands flat on your lap. You can hold your hands together like like this if you'd like to. Um, but just the point is that you'd be comfortable and relaxed. And if you're seated. Have your feet flat on the floor. Don't cross your legs and be aware of your posture. Um, back straight, but not stiff. And if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, go ahead and do that. Um, and, but if you don't feel like doing that, just um, let your gaze become unfocused somewhere in front of you. So let's start. I'll start by saying our lives are so busy. We go from one thing to the next very quickly and transitions are important. So let's just sit for a few quiet moments to arrive, to be fully present right here, right now. Take a few deep breaths at your own pace, bringing your attention to the breath in your body, wherever it's most noticeable for you right now. And gradually sense your intention to be here and the feeling of caring for yourself that brings you here. Breathing in, say to yourself, I sense my intention to take care of myself. And breathing out, say to yourself, may I let go of self-blame. Notice any self-criticism 
and see if you could sense letting go of it, even for a moment. Just hold it with attention and kindness, not trying to be where you are not. And bring your attention back to your breath. Breathing in, say to yourself, as I sense my limits and my abilities with kindness, when you breathe out, say, may I let go of impatience. Notice how when you try to go too fast, the effort may not last. What does it feel like to respect your own rhythm? Letting go of that extra pressure to take the step that's doable at this moment to let go of harshness and impatience. And now bringing your attention back to your breathing, I'm ringing a little bell to let you know that this meditation period is over. Listen to the sound as it fades, opening your eyes if they've been closed and return your attention back to your room. Now, I'd love to hear something about how that was for you, but I am not able to go back and forth between presenter view and letting you contribute. So we're going to have a little time after I've finished talking to talk about how that experience was for you. So please, um, if you have thoughts or questions or comments, hold them till the end of the, of the presentation and, and we'll talk about them then. So now <clears throat> we're gonna be eating, doing a mindful eating presentation, okay? I just was looking at the chat window to see if anybody is there, but I don't see anything. Um, so I hope all of you got the message to bring a little article of food with you. Let's see if I can. You. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the chat up just if anybody has a question about about what we're going to be doing. Oops, let me just... Linda, when you say you can't see people, is it because of your view or because everybody has their cameras off? My view is not allowing me to see anything except my slide presentation and I oh you know what I actually maybe I can I can see something I, you know what I, I just figured out how I can see people okay so um I see most people have their cameras off right um, but that's okay what I what what I really want to know right now is if anybody uh let's see you can click on the video. Yeah, okay, that's what I was doing. Thank you, Infinity, I see that. I see that now, okay. Um, I just wanna make sure that uh, everybody has a little, a little article of food <clears throat> to do this mindful eating exercise with. Uh, so if, if you don't have an article of food with you, that's okay, you can use your imagination, okay? <clears throat> so I'll just, uh, so I'll guide you through a mindful eating exercise. <clears throat> so, so hopefully you're now quiet and calm inside after having meditate, med meditated for a few minutes. Whoops, excuse me. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not able to advance my slides again, uh, but I will be patient and I will keep talking. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so the next slide is going to show some people eating mindfully. And it shows a man with uh, two children. And I have to tell you, I have um, 
two children of my own and uh, three grandchildren and lots of nieces and nephews. And I will tell you and remind you that when you are with children, <clears throat> you can become very aware of what mindful eating is all about. Children, especially the little ones, are, um, they always eat mindfully. They're very conscious of everything. And so I want to tell you that that's what this, uh, this next uh, part of our presentation is going to be. And it's about eating mindfully. So taking the food, whatever little piece of food that you've got, and hold it in the palm of your hand and have a look at it. Look deeply at whatever this piece of food is that you've got. You know, bring it right in front of you and, and look at it because you've never seen this particular piece of food before. You may have seen many others that are like it, but whatever the food is that you have, take it and have a deep look at it, okay? And what I'd like you to do as you're looking at this article of food is to assess your level of hunger on a scale of one to 10, one being not hungry at all and 10 being ravenous. Ask yourself right now how hungry you are. Okay, I see somebody said they just got done with dinner, that you're not hungry at all. <laughs> it's okay. Um, you can still do this exercise, whether you're hungry or not. Um, <clears throat> so now take that, uh, so you've looked at the article of food that you have in front of you. And bring it to your nose. Don't put it, don't touch it with your nose, but just smell it. What I'm suggesting you do is see if it's something that you can smell. Is there an odor to it? Just noticing what it smells like. You've looked at it, you've touched it, you're smelling it now. Now the next thing we're gonna do, <clears throat> well, before I move on to the next thing, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say to you, try again to assess your level of hunger. And once you've done that, <clears throat> you may take that piece of food and put it in your mouth, but don't do anything besides put it in your mouth. Put it in your mouth on your tongue and just observe. I know that's hard to do, but just try to notice <clears throat> what it feels like to have this small piece of food in your mouth. <clears throat> Are you salivating? Are you feeling the impulse, impulse to chew? <clears throat> How is it for you to have a piece of food in your mouth? Now you can start to chew. I'm giving you permission to chew it, but chew it slowly and pay attention to how your mouth moves when you're chewing. Notice the impulse to swallow. Notice how much saliva you're producing as you chew. Chew it thoroughly before you swallow it. Make it into a puree in your mouth. <clears throat> and keep chewing and swallow when you feel the impulse to do that. Okay. I hope you're enjoying whatever it is you're eating. Okay, well, let's just sit with this for a moment, okay? How hungry, somebody says, 
Someone's gulping like a guppy. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> um, that was me from salivating. <laughs> <laughs> how often do you pay attention to how much you're salivating? It's something to think about. It's important to have saliva. Otherwise, it's hard, much harder to uh, swallow and digest your food. Right. <clears throat> so... If you have another article of food and you would like to do this same exercise once again, go ahead and do it. Remember what I said to do. Look at the food, bring it to your nose and smell it. Put it into your mouth and never take more into your mouth than you can chew, before, chew thoroughly before you swallow it. So if you want to try to, to do this once more, just remember that those are the steps that you need to, to take. <clears throat> Smell, chew slowly, put the food into your mouth, chew it slowly and attentively, paying attention to how you move your tongue, how you move your jaw, what's happening with the food as you are chewing it. And when the impulse to swallow happens, and go ahead and swallow when you're ready. And notice now what your hunger level is. Just notice. That's what mindfulness is, paying attention on purpose in a particular way without judging or criticizing yourself or anybody else. Aha, uh -huh, there's the picture of the children. They finally showed up. <clears throat> now that we're done talking about eating. So our next part of the presentation is meditation in motion. As one of my yoga teachers refers to yoga as meditation in, in motion. These kids look like they are really enjoying themselves, don't they? I love to watch kids playing and exercising and moving around. They just get so into it. The whole body is experiencing what these kids are doing. They're jumping rope and they're having fun, aren't they? You can do that too. I'm not saying that you should, can or should jump rope. If you want to, sure. But there's lots of different ways you can experience mindful movement. So I'm gonna take a few minutes with you to do a little bit of mindful moving. I just did it myself. How about noticing how you feel right now? Where are your feet? Where are your arms? How are you sitting? Or whatever position you happen to be in. Mindful movement is paying attention. If you've ever done yoga, you know that that's what they tell you to do. Pay attention to how you're moving. So let's do a little bit of mindful moving. First, I'm gonna do what feels good to me right now. And I'm gonna tell you, since I'm not a <clears throat> trained exercise instructor, I'm a very experienced at yoga, but I'm not trained, I, I'm not a uh, physical therapist. So I don't know what movements are right for you, especially if you have <clears throat> some kind of physical conditions that affect how you move. But I, what I wanna say is when you're moving, pay attention <clears throat> to how the movement is affecting you. And if you hear me telling you to do something and it's something that you know is gonna hurt you, don't do it, please don't do it. Your body is, your, is a much better teacher than I am. Um, so anyway, we're just gonna do a, a few brief movements, mindful movements. So. I'm going to start by raising my shoulders. To me, it feels good to just raise my shoulders up like this. You can see me, right? I'm just raising my shoulders and holding them up like that. And then I brought them up very slowly and I'm going to bring them down very slowly. 
And I'm gonna do it one more time, raising my shoulders up. That feels good to me, but if it doesn't feel good to you, just don't do it. And then the next thing I would like to do is raise my arms. Oh, these sleeves are kind of tight. <laughs> I have to unbutton my sleeves so I can raise my arms up straight towards the ceiling. I like the way that feels. Can you do that? Do you like the way it feels? If you can hold it that way for a few moments, do so. If you can't, lower your arms. Whatever feels good to you. And also remember in times past, if you did this kind of movement and you injured yourself, then don't do this. Then lowering the arms. <clears throat> and how about doing a gentle twist? If you're able to, let's do a, sm uh, a small gentle twist. So I'm taking my right hand and putting it on the seat of the chair I'm sitting in uh, by the back of my right hip. And I'm taking my left hand and I'm putting it on the outside edge of my right knee. And then I'm just gonna turn. I'm turning my head and my shoulders. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on my left hand to make myself strip, twist a little bit more. And so I'm twisting my spine and my neck and I like the way that feels. It's just something that gets some of the kinks out of the back for me. If you can hold it for a few moments, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, come out of the position and let's go in the other direction. Again, noticing how you feel with your back straight. Now taking the left hand and putting it on what you're sitting on, just kind of behind your left hip, and then take the right hand and put it flat against the outside of the left knee, and then turn the head, the shoulders, and the rib cage just a little bit, just whatever amount feels like a, a nice stretch to you and pause there for a few moments. If you don't like the way it feels, turn around. Just pausing, noticing how you feel, and then come back to center. Okay, I hope you feel okay. That's all we're gonna do for mindful movement. So, Moving right along, whoops, now it went over twice. Okay, so <clears throat> mindfulness, eating and moving. That's the topic for today. I'm reminding you that all those things together can help you to reduce your stress levels, to feel comfortable in your own body and it's okay to enjoy life. Doesn't that look like a lovely scene? I would love to sit out there with my little cup of something, whatever tea I happen to be in the mood for today, looking out over the valley. So that being said, let's see. I see that Louisa is here to help me out. I would like to open this the floor up for questions. I'm going to um, stop the spotlight on you so you okay. can see everybody. Thank you. And if everybody attending would like to, you can stop your screen share too, if you would like. Oh, you wanted to put up your last slide first. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let's okay. do that and then everybody um, can see each other. Thank you, there Louisa. Sure. I have a, yeah, so we'll leave this slide up. I just wanted to give you some references, some resources. If you want further information about mindfulness practices, that's what this last slide is. And this is going to be available through the library 
if you'd like to um, to get this uh, to get a printout of this page. Um, these are some of my favorite places where you can get free information on meditating and mind other mindfulness practices. There, and at the very bottom of the list is my contact information. Okay, so so you can have a look at that, but know that you can get that from the library, right? Louisa, is, what else do I need to tell them about that? No, that's absolutely right. So just give us a call and we can email it to you or um, print it, whatever you need. So, okay. Um, now everybody can remove their cameras and unmute themselves and... Um, you're more than welcome to speak with Lynn.